Hi and welcome to this series of Radis' 5G demo videos. In this video, we will show a live demonstration of Radis' 3GPP Release 15.3.0 compliant 5G standalone solution. The end-to-end -end solution consists of a Radis' 5G core network, 5G next generation node B, and a 5G compliant UE simulator. The demonstration will showcase 3GPP compliant setup procedures between user equipment, 5G core, and 5G RAN network elements, setting up 5G fast path data service, and achieving high throughput uplink and downlink data rates simultaneously for a single 5G cell. The data rates achieved are close to the theoretical maximum limits defined by the 3GPP form. Let us first look at the demo setup. The RADIS' 5G core network is comprised of the following microservices enabled network function nodes, access and mobility management function, session management function, and user plane function. For the radio access network, the RADIS' 5G next generation node B is disaggregated into two software modules, a G node B centralized unit called CU and a G node B distributed unit called DU. The RADIS' CU architecture is highly scalable and can manage multiple DUs. Each DU provides highly efficient data processing for enhanced mobile broadband services, ultra-low latency, and massive IoT services. The RADIS' disaggregated CU-DU architecture leverages 3GPP Release 15.3.0 compliant interfaces. A simulated RADIS' 5G UE is used for the demonstration. When a 5G UE is activated, first it performs the RRC procedure towards the GNB successfully. Next, UE attempts to NAS registration procedures and successfully registers to the network. After the registration, UE initiates a PDU session establishment procedure to get an IP address from the network. Once the session is established, the end user can access data network services. A 5G FastPath data flow is established from the data network to the end user application to enable the 5G services. Let's now look at the live demonstration. First, we will activate all the 5G core network elements. On the top left corner of the screen, you can see the user plane function node coming up. Following that, on the top right corner of the screen, you can see the session management function node coming up. And on the bottom of the screen, you can see the access and mobility management function coming up. Next, we will launch all the radio access network modules. On the top left corner of the screen, we have a G node B CU coming up. And on the top right corner of the screen, we have a G node B DU coming up. The message 5G cell up on the console indicates that communication between the CU and DU is successful. We have the network ready. Now let's trigger the 5G UE simulator to register to the network, which you can see on the bottom left corner of the screen. The message on the UE screen indicates that the UE can detect the 5G cell. And the message on the DU screen confirms that the UE registration and session establishment procedure was successful. EU is now ready to access 5G services. To verify the 5G end-to-end -end session, we will start a ping application from the data network server to ping the UE IP address. On the bottom right corner of the screen, you can see the ping responses, which verifies a successful session. The round-trip delay of just 1.5 milliseconds indicates a fast 5G network service as per the 3GPP compliance. Now we will use an iPerf application to showcase the high throughput full duplex data service on a single 5G cell. On the top left corner of the screen, you can see the iPerf client, and on the top right corner of the screen, you can see the iPerf server for the downlink data service. On the bottom left corner of the screen, you can see the iPerf client, and on the bottom right corner of the screen, you can see the iPerf server for the uplink data service. As you can see on the screen, on the downlink, we can achieve 1 gigabit per second data rate, and on the uplink, we can achieve 240 megabits per second data rate simultaneously. These 5G single cell full duplex data rates are close to the theoretical maximum defined by the 3GPP form. To validate the 3GPP signaling exchange across 5G network elements, 
we have captured the Wireshark logs on both the RAN and Core network side. On the RAN side, you can see the messages for the F1AP procedure, NGAP procedure, and the RRC procedures. And on the Core network side, you can see the messages for the NGAP procedures, NAS registration procedures, and session establishment procedures. We have successfully demonstrated that the RADIS' end-to-end -end 5G standalone solution follows 3GPP release 15.3.0 compliant procedures and can achieve close to the theoretical maximum uplink and downlink data rates simultaneously on a single 5G cell. Thank you for watching this video. To learn more about RADIS' 5G software solution and expertise, visit us at radis.com.